Hi, everybody. Welcome back to our Selpip Live series. Are you preparing to apply for a Canadian citizenship? Do you want to have a general understanding of how the process works? Uh, keep watching to find out. Uh, if you're meeting for the first time, hi, uh, I'm Ashwati, the host of Selpip Live, and we go live every Tuesday and Friday at 9.30 a.m. PST. We share tips, strategies, and important information about the Selpip test. So please subscribe to our channel if you haven't already, and give this video a thumbs up if you find it useful. We will be moving to the main segment in a second, but I also want to let you know that today we're playing a game of trivia to test our knowledge of Canada. So if you're interested in participating, please stay with us after our segment with Canada Visa and download the Kahoot app on your phone. So with that, um, we will go to our main segment. Many of you already know him from our previous episodes. Our guest today is an immigration lawyer with Canada Visa. Let's give him a warm, warm welcome. Hi, Chris. Thank you for joining us today. How are you doing? Hi, Aswati. Thank you for inviting me again. It's a pleasure to be back for this third uh, appearance. Yeah, it is great here as well. Um, so we do have quite a few people waiting. Um, I will let you get started with your presentation for us. Sure. Uh, so as Ashwati mentioned, uh, my name is Chris Collette. I'm an immigration lawyer at Canada Visa. Uh, we're based in Montreal, Quebec. And today I'm talking to you about applying for Canadian citizenship. Uh, all the latest updates, the current application processes, and of course, timelines uh, in the coronavirus era. So without further ado, I will just jump right into it. So um, a couple of preliminary points before we get started. Uh, there are several different types of uh, ways to get citizenship. Today, we will just be talking about the grant, which is what most immigrants to Canada will use to get the citizenship. Uh, there are other ways to get it. Uh, if you're born in Canada, for example, most people have automatic right to Canadian citizenship. And if one of uh, your parents was Canadian, also chances you might be a Canadian citizen and there's a proof you can get for that. There's also more complicated cases uh, such as adoptions and resumptions, but today we're just gonna stick to the basic application. Another important consideration to bear in mind if you are thinking of applying for Canadian citizenship is uh, dual citizenship. So Canada and many other countries around the world uh, permit their citizens to also be citizens of another country. But uh, there are some uh, countries around the world that will not allow this. So if you are thinking of applying for citizenship, one of the first things you should do is verify whether you're going to have to give up your current citizenship to obtain Canadian citizenship. Now, with respect to the application uh, for citizenship itself, uh, it's a fairly straightforward process. Uh, there's basically these six steps which I've laid out on the screen and which I'll go through one by one. Um, first, of course, you have to be a permanent resident if you want to get a grant of citizenship. There are also some residency requirements, tax requirements, uh, the requirement to submit a complete application, of course. And uh, in most cases, there will also be a knowledge test and interview, followed by the last step, which is taking the oath of citizenship itself. So with respect to the resident requirement, uh, Every permanent resident who has resided in Canada for this sufficient amount of time can apply for citizenship, although there are some exceptions. Uh, before applying, you wanna make sure that there's no unfulfilled conditions with your permanent residency. Now, most permanent residents today will have no conditions on their residency, but there are still some applications where, for example, you might have to run a business for a while uh, as part of your permanent residency. So that's something that's definitely should be checked before you apply. You also have to be free of any issues of fraud or misrepresentation on previous immigration applications. Um, and of course, uh, criminality and removal orders will also be a bar for applying for citizenship. So if you have pending charges or a conviction in Canada or abroad, that could be an issue that you want to address before applying. 
course, one of the most common issues when applying for citizenship is meeting the residency requirement. So this changed recently. There were some amendments made a few years ago, and the citizenship application process actually changed quite a bit. Uh, it's a bit more simple and straightforward these days, but the requirements are also a little bit more strict than they used to be. So right now, if you want to apply for Canadian citizenship, you will need to have resided in Canada for three years in the five years before you apply. So that's about 1095 days. Um, now, you want to have a little bit of a buffer if you're going to be applying for citizenship. I would not apply on the 1,090, uh, 1095th day. I would at least want a couple of extra weeks of residency as a sort of buffer, just to make it absolutely clear that you meet the residency requirement. Another common question that people ask is, I was in Canada on a work permit or as a student uh, before I got my permanent residency. Can any of those days count towards my citizenship? And the answer is yes. Um, if you were in Canada as a temporary resident or as a protected person, uh, you can count some of those days uh, towards your citizenship count. Uh, the rule is for every day you spent on a temporary permit, like a study permit or a work permit, you can count that as a half day of residency in Canada when applying for citizenship. And you can accumulate up to 365 days of residency in this way. Uh, it's also important to note that the residency requirement does not apply to everyone. If you have, for example, if you're applying with your children, they will not be subject to the residency requirement. You, the principal applicant, will be, but your children will not have to show that they were here for this whole time. The third requirement is filing taxes. Uh, this is if you are required to do so. Not every Canadian resident is required to file taxes. For example, if you don't have any income, you may not have to file. Uh, but if you do have a higher income or if you want access to government benefits or if you want to claim a refund, then you are required to file taxes and showing that you have done so will be a requirement of the citizenship application. In terms of the uh, fourth requirement, uh, very important uh, to submit a complete citizenship application. And what this means is, generally speaking, you're going to want the forms with a residency calculation clearly outlining the time you spent in Canada before you applied. You're going to also want to provide your passports with any entry and exit stamps, any visas, or anything else that establishes where you were during the previous five years. Of course, proof of language ability is required, and the CELPIP test is a great way to show this. Uh, however, there are also some exceptions, uh, an alternative evidence of language that you can use in some cases. Police certificates will also be required for any countries you've resided in for more than six months in the four or five years before you apply. And it's a bit of a unique situation because in some cases, even uh, children 14 years and older will have to provide police certificates, which isn't often the case with other kinds of immigration applications. You're gonna to wanna to also provide proof if you're applying as a family together that you are related to all the applicants. So that can be in the form of birth and marriage certificates. You're gonna to need to include a couple of IDs and some photos, and finally, the citizenship application fee, which was raised in recent years. It's now $630 for an adult and $100 for a minor child. So if you can get all this together, you mail it off to the Citizenship Application Center, and it'll take a while before you get a response. But when they do get back to you, uh, Ideally, they'll schedule you for a knowledge test. This means that you're passing on to the next stage of the citizenship process. The knowledge test is required for all applicants who are 18 to 54 years old. If you are younger than that or older than 54, uh, you will not need to do the knowledge test. Uh, usually the test happens on the same day you do an interview with a citizenship officer, officer or if it's a complicated case, sometimes you will end up in front of a citizenship judge at a hearing. Uh, so most of these steps happen all on the same day, a few months after you've applied for your citizenship. With respect to the knowledge test, uh, it is a fairly straightforward test. You can do it in English or French. It's about half an hour. 
20 questions, multiple choice and true false. And there is a study guide called Discover Canada, which will be provided to you and which will form the basis for that test. The test is usually done written, but there are exceptions made where you can do it orally. You might have to include some additional evidence, medical evidence, for example, um, if you need to do the test orally because you have issues with eyesight. Most people will pass the test on the first try, but not everybody. You can redo the test up to three times. Uh, if you don't succeed in passing after that third time, then the citizenship application might be refused and you might have to start over again from the beginning. If you pass the knowledge test, then congratulations. You're gonna be scheduled to take your oath of citizenship. Uh, the oath is for people who are 14 years and older. Uh, normally they'll schedule a meeting with you. Uh, you'll have a few dozen other people who are also receiving citizenship and you'll show up and take the oath and that's the end of the process. And during the coronavirus times, they have started actually doing these citizenship ceremonies over Zoom virtually. So there are now people who will complete their citizenship online uh, in a virtual oath. And uh, the seventh step is congratulations, welcome to Canada. You can now apply for your passport and um, you're our Canadian citizen from that day on. Now, in terms of processing times, uh, the average right now is about 12 months for citizenship applications. Bear in mind though, these are the pre-coronavirus calculations. Uh, as with almost all other immigration services, there are some delays being incurred uh, when applying for citizenship because of reduced staffing and other issues. Um, I would expect not too many more delays though, not much more than, than maybe 18 months at this point. Um, it is also possible to request urgent processing of a citizenship application in some cases. The most common reasons for requesting urgency are uh, for employment, you're, you want to get a job or you're at risk of losing a job. Uh, there's also considerations made for studies if you're about to study and you need citizenship uh, proof to complete that process. Um, and urgent family travel medical emergencies uh, and similar situations. You can request urgent processing either with the initial application or after you've submitted it. Um, it is up to the citizenship office to determine whether they will actually process that application uh, urgently. Now, with most citizenship applications, the process, like I said, is fairly straightforward, uh, but there are still some issues that can arise um, during the process, which can cause either delays or possibly lead to a refusal. Uh, one of the most common issues is related to insufficient evidence on file. This is especially the case if you've been traveling a lot uh, and you don't have very good proof of all of your travels. Uh, it can lead to some questions being asked about whether or not you were actually in Canada when you said you were. So what happens in some cases is uh, a, a citizenship officer will review the file and they'll determine that they're not, they need more evidence of your presence in Canada. And they will send out what's called a residency questionnaire. And the residency questionnaire is basically um, a long form where they ask for details about all of your travels. And usually we also recommend providing uh, additional evidence of presence in a country. For example, credit card statements showing that you made some transactions. If you get a residency questionnaire, uh, it is very important that you provide a full and complete response. And that actually might be a good time to reach out to a lawyer or a consultant to help you because it is important that you respond fully and not hide anything and not forget to include anything with a residency questionnaire. Ideally, you will have a complete application and you will avoid the need to respond to a residency questionnaire at all, because if you do get one, it can add six, 12, or even more months to the processing time of an application. It takes it from the simple stream and it puts it into the complicated stream. Uh, another common issue is uh, insufficient evidence submitted with the file. <laughs> Uh, and this is uh, why you want to make sure that you include fairly good evidence of your travels. In addition to passport stamps, people sometimes also include their flight itineraries, entry and exit uh, tickets, uh, sorry, flight tickets, entry and exit records from countries, 
Uh, the list goes on and on. Um, but the whole point is to prove to the citizenship authorities where your physical person was located uh, during the last five years. There are also some less commonly seen issues that arise from time to time. For example, um, sometimes people will uh, be accused of misrepresenting information on their application or uh, failing to provide evidence that was requested. Some people, for example, have two passports and they'll only provide one during the citizenship process. Um, definitely, you want to be upfront and forthright when, when doing these applications and you don't want to hide any evidence from the authorities. Another issue which happens very rarely, but is a possibility, is that after your citizenship is approved, uh, they actually, a, a representative of the government actually challenges that decision. Basically, they disagree with it and they'll file uh, an application to have that decision canceled. Uh, if that happens, uh, it's a bit of a too complicated of a topic to go into today, but if that happens, uh, you should seek professional advice uh, right away. It is an extremely rare occurrence, but it does happen. Um, if there are any other issues while the file is in process, you might get what's called a procedural fairness letter or PFL. Uh, these are basically letters that will be issued asking for more information on your file and they'll say if we don't get a response in time or a convincing response, we're going to refuse the application. Uh, the subject matter of the PFL can vary from case to case. Um, you, again, though, you want to make sure you provide a full and honest response and maybe it might be a good time to reach out to a lawyer for assistance at that point. If the file is refused, uh, you have a few options. Uh, you may be able to request a reconsideration. Uh, you may be able to uh, go to federal court and challenge that decision. Um, that again is something that you would want to hire a lawyer to do. Uh, the process is not easy, but if you feel like a mistake was made in the processing of your application, or if they failed to consider evidence that you provided, that might be a viable reason for challenging the decision in federal court. And uh, uh, that would be pretty much it in terms of uh, what can happen after you, you get a citizenship decision. Um, so with that said, uh, it's a very brief primer. Obviously there will be some easier cases and some more complicated cases. And if any of you have any specific questions, I invite you all to contact me. Uh, our law firm website is on the screen right now and I can be reached at cc at canadavisa.com. All right, thank you. Thank you, Chris. That was uh, an informative presentation and I think you covered all the points. Um, there are few questions, two mostly, uh, that I will ask you. Um, so uh, according to you, um, you spoke a little bit about interviews um, along with the knowledge test. Could you give us a little more information about the interviews? The purpose of the interview is basically to review all of your evidence, right? You're supposed to bring your original passports uh, and other evidence that you've uh, provided with the application to the interview. They also want to verify your language abilities. Even if you've provided a language test, the officer will want to just talk to you and have a brief conversation. And if there are any issues that need clarification, if, if there was information, you know, a gap in time, for example, on your application, the officer might inquire about that as well. Um, okay. The interviews, I mentioned that there's a difference between interviews and hearings. Uh, there are citizenship officers which do the interviews and judges which do the hearings. Um, but in most cases, you'll talk to an officer. Okay, um, thank you for that. Um, I hope that was helpful. Um, so another question I have uh, is about, you also mentioned about police certificates and English tests. Uh, so according to you, what can you tell us about the the validity of these so really like um you know at what within what time has does your english test need to be valid within what time does your police certificate need to be valid yeah um the the, the requirements are somewhat more lax when it comes to citizenship uh you don't always need language tests with taken within the last two years although it is always ideal to do so um police certificates you do want to be careful you want them to be um fresh, I guess is the word to use, uh, at least post dating the last time you were in the country that you're ordering them from. 
Um, again, the rule is you will need one for all countries that you've resided in for six months or 183 days or more during the last five years before you apply. Most people will have been in Canada for that entire time. Uh, you do not need to get an RCMP clearance from Canada when you're applying. That is done automatically as part of the application process. Okay, thank you so much for answering that. Um, again, uh, thank you for coming and I'm sure that your presentation helped a lot of viewers. Um, it was very informative. Uh, so thank you for joining us, Chris. Thanks, it was a pleasure and I hope to be back again. Great. Um, so thank that was Chris, guys. Uh, but now it is time to play our citizenship trivia. Okay. If you haven't already downloaded the app to play with us, now is the time to do it. Uh, it is called Kahoot, K-A-H-O-O-T with an exclamation point. Um, so please download that on your phone. It is a free app and you can play with us without having to log into it or making an account. So I'm going to give you a couple seconds to download it if you haven't already. Um, and for some reason, if you're unable to download it, um, you can also write down your answers on a sheet of paper um, and then manually see if you got them all right. So the point of this quiz is to have fun. So whatever um, you can, can do to participate, we're really happy. Um, and so, yes, if you have, I'm hoping that you've downloaded the app for now. Once you open the app, uh, you should be able to see a button at the bottom center of your screen. Um, it has four colors on it. Please tap on that button and it will prompt you to enter a pin number. So go ahead. And once you are, once you see that screen, the pin number, I will give you the pin number right now. It is 910360. Again, it's 910360. Enter the PIN number on the screen. Um, and if you have any questions about this process, please ask in the comments below and we will help you out. You also have to enter a nickname, um, which will show up on screen here on YouTube. So please uh, pick a nickname. Um, you can put whatever you want. I usually pick an animal, but you can put food, you can put birds, whatever you want your nickname to be. Okay. so. After you enter your nickname, you are now in the game with us. Next, all you have to do is wait for the questions to come up on screen. Um, we've made sure that we give you enough time to answer, so don't worry uh, about answering the questions, but answer as soon as you can because you also get points for taking less of time. Um, so without further ado, I will uh, go into the game. Our marketing manager is here today, CJ, and she will be the host of this game. Um, she's also the one who prepared the questions be uh, because I wanted to play. So, <laughs> CJ, thank you so much for joining us. Ashwati, thank you so much for having me. It's um, super exciting to be on this side of Selfit Live. Yes, uh, CJ was our producer. Uh, she helped us at the back end a lot. She was the one who taught us how to do these things that we're doing. So uh, I'm glad that she's here with us today. So CJ, I'm going to let you get started. Sounds good. I'm super excited. I'm going to share my screen, which will also have, um, you know, the number on it. So you can see it. You can see who's joined us. It's so fun that we've got a number of players started already. But I also wanted to welcome um neil gray who is uh on our team as well and who's been a guest on the show and we've also got lauren uh with us who is also a feature uh and a fixture on the program uh she's our digital lead in marketing um so super exciting to have us all together um again neil hello hello how are you doing i'm ready i'm primed i'm excited I'm so scared. <laughs> so just for a little bit, uh, so it's so nice to finally sort of be seeing um, each other because we um, are a team that likes to play trivia a lot. Um, Neil is our resident trivia master. Uh, and so our objective today is going to be to, I mean, have fun, <laughs> but also ideally, not uh, to ideally have you dethroned. That's totally fair. 
um, Neil has not played a game of trivia at a pub and ever lost. Um, but I'm feeling good uh, about today. Um, but ultimately what we're doing is to have fun and learn. So there's a lot of really cool stuff coming on. Um, so one of the things I just want to give everyone the heads up before we go is this is what your screen will look like when you have to answer the questions. Um, so there will be a little bit of delay. So if you see that before, don't worry about it. Um, you'll see sort of a countdown that will say three, two, one, but we're just on a bit of a delay. So don't worry about it. The question will pop up and be ready to jump in on it. Um, so we're still getting a lot of people joining, which is great and fun. So we'll give it a couple more minutes. Lauren, you said you're nervous. Yeah, I'm just nervous because I am really competitive, but I've always lost to Neil. So <laughs> fair enough, fair enough. Who hasn't lost to Neil? Um, and so I put together this question, this quiz with questions that are from the knowledge test that Chris was alluding to earlier. Um, so we've got a lot of um, content that is directly from uh, the citizenship knowledge test. Um, and I, in preparation, um, I didn't do any studying, but I wanted to see what the questions are like, because I thought that my grade 10 history class would be sufficient. Um, it was not. I did it twice um, and got 65% and what you need is a 75% to pass. So, oh, no. But what it does mean, yeah, Neil, you studied in history, I think a little bit more than I did, um, but it, there are tons of really good resources to be able to learn this stuff. Um, and so it looks like we've got about 12 players, which is great. And I think we're about ready to get started. So hopefully this will serve um, as a fun way to study uh, while also having fun. All right, here we go. So our Soap of Live, Canadian Citizenship Kahoot. Very exciting. So there are 10 questions and a bonus question. And the first one is, who was the first leader of a responsible government in the Canadas in 1849? Oh, I just want to say something, guys, before you can... You can see the question on top. A lot of times it gets missed. So I want to say that you can see the question on the top of the screen, even if you didn't see it the first time. And when you answer your, on your phone, they're only colors. So make sure you match the color when you're answering. Okay. So here we go. We've got seven answers in. So this is great. Um, I did not get this one right but I'm excited to, to share the answer. So the question sort of moves forward once all the players have answered um, or the time runs out. So we'll give everyone a little bit of time. We're gonna get comfortable with silence and thinking. <laughs> I think I might know who it's not. I don't know if I got the answer right. But... Don't tease us, Neil. What was that, Sorry. Lauren? I said, don't tease us, Neil. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Got it wrong. <laughs> He's just dangling hope in front of us. <laughs> All right, so we've got 11 answers, and we'll see. Time's running out. Here we go. OK, so yeah, Shwadi. Hey. <laughs> I picked the longest <laughs> name. Yeah, so <laughs> Sir Louis Hippolyte Lafontaine was um, the first leader of a responsible government in the Canadas before Canada was a country, uh, it was a province. And so Johnny MacDonald was our first prime minister, but Sir Louis Hippolyte Lafontaine was the sort of the first leader of a responsible government in the Canadas. Uh, um, I have a question about this, yeah. sorry. Um, it's, was he French? Yes, so he is from Boucherville, which is in Quebec, and not far from where my family is from. And there is a tunnel named after him that I used to go to all the time when visiting oh. my family from Ottawa to Montreal. That I is adorable. Right, just for the record. I, did, that doesn't mean I got it right. Oh. <laughs> okay, so we'll go on to the next question, see where we are. All right, so T, whoever you are, 
Um, and Dodo, big accomplishment right there. Neil running in third. So this was because you answered faster um, and got the right answer. Okay, next question. When did the Canadian Charter of Rights and Freedoms become part of the Canadian Constitution? So this one, I also got wrong. I'm not good with numbers or dates. Numbers and dates are hard. They are hard. Um, I'm gonna try. But when you see sort of the journey and read about it in history, it's easier to remember when you're remembering the story than when you're just trying to memorize the dates. All right, we've got answers coming in. Nine, I think we're waiting for 11 or 12. Great, okay. So the Charter of Rights and Freedoms became part of the Canadian Constitution in 1982. And <laughs> the Canadian Charter does, pop quiz, three freedoms, Neil. I'm adding bonus questions for you. Uh, freedom of assembly. Some of the freedoms that are protected. So the Charter on Rights and Freedoms protects every Canadian's um, rights to be treated equally under the law, and it protects certain specific rights. Can you name a couple? Right. So things like freedom of assembly, religion, that kind of stuff, speech. Yeah, freedom of expression, assembly, and religion are sort of the three big the three big guns in the Charter. Codified into I... law by Pierre Elliott Trudeau. <laughs> yeah. Sorry to interrupt, but guys, don't answer in the comments. That is cheating. I mean, I know you know, but answer <laughs> in play the game. Don't let other people know your answer, especially on the that's, what, that's what's happening. Everyone's just, this is my fault. This was because I sort of organized the masses against Neil and we're all just trying <laughs> that's, that's my fault. But excellent work. This is great. Everyone's learning. Let's see what's happening. Oh, Neil, you got there. Uh... Lauren on the board. Lauren. All right. So question number three. So Canadians work hard to respect which political ideology or political theory? Some, some interesting ones, some we recognize. All right, so Canadians work hard to respect which political ideology. All right, answers coming in, coming in hot now. So the delay has reached. It's exciting. Lauren, how are you feeling? How do you feel? Um, just tense. I it's my own fault. I just am way too competitive, but usually not good enough to like, you know, actually be competitive. <laughs> Great work. Ashwadi, how are you doing over there? I'm good. I'm, I just, I see, I'm hoping that my answer is right. Um, I think it is. I'm not sure. So, but yeah. I'm doing well. Pluralism. Woo! Excellent. So pluralism <laughs> answer here. And that's, you know, a political theory whereby power and influence are distributed uh, sort of throughout the political process is what kind of allows bargaining um, and makes for bargaining. Um, and to that end, you'll see sort of a few other questions there. Jess, I like it. Jess, Lauren coming, making a sort of return to near the top of the leaderboard. Um, and Jess M, congratulations. You're, you're doing some good work here. I believe in you, Jess. Um. <laughs> uh, okay, so two responsibilities of the federal government. Name two responsibilities of the federal government. <laughs> These are, again, I state real questions from the knowledge test. And so it's, a, it's an important, all of these are equally important if we're being honest. But which ones are the responsibilities of the federal government? All right. 
right, answer is coming in. Oh, Jessica Nada's doing doing some good work. I feel good here. Okay, good. So that is correct. Foreign policy, national defense. Um, it is certainly not to say that emergency services and citizenship are critical, but they are not solely the responsibility of sort of the government. I was secretly hoping snow removal would be there. Honestly, it's so cute. That felt right, but it, should uh, be. it is. Maybe it should be. <laughs> maybe it should be. Um, Neil, you were originally from Edmonton. I am. Snow removal you, is a real thing there, but not out here in Vancouver. Yes. So the snow days in Vancouver are very different from the snow days in Edmonton, which is why it's not federal. <laughs> Here we are. Great. Okay. Lauren, good work. Um, okay. No, just said she's come there. Next question. Two responsibilities of the provincial government. So this is when we talk about separation powers, plurality, distribution of power within the political process. Is it just me or are two of the answers exactly the same? <laughs> yeah. Oh, they are. Oh, no. <laughs> no. I'm gonna just, that's totally my fault. I had to have a real think there. I was like, honestly, I did not mean to trip you up, and I hope that it's not damaged the integrity of the test. So sure I have a question. Someone? Yeah. If I answer, if one of them is right, I mean, if yellow and green are both the same, and then if I click yellow or green, will I still be counted as the right answer? If it is right, if it's the right answer. Let me try and remember which one I said is green. As correct, I want to say it's the green one. Well, here we learned a lesson, <laughs> uh, which one it is. So I put it in there twice to make sure we got it right. So everyone got it, except for now four people who <laughs> will not have twice did accordingly. I have ruined the integrity of the game. Oh, no. But, Neil, did you pick the green one? No, I picked yellow. Yeah. <laughs> Neil. It's I'm not right. like too upset about this. The, the field is evening out. It's good. I don't know if anyone can see this along the bottom, but someone who is not on our leaderboard, Marine, just hit an answer streak of three. So congratulations. Read yes. Marine is on fire. Exactly. Literally on fire. So great. Our next question is... What is the role of the opposition parties? Sometimes it feels like it's unclear, but they have an official role. I know this, and I know this because I've read it. Tell me more. Oh, um, I joined the, Can of course I did. I joined the R Canada sub, and there was a con there was a document about all the members that were in the cabinet, and then there were also, but somebody was obviously arguing against, and they were talking about all the members against the cabinet and what their duties were. So mm -hmm. that's how I know. I hope I get this right after all this. If you get it wrong, it is simply because the source, maybe Reddit wasn't taking it straight from the study guide. True. You know? Yeah, maybe. All right, so we've got just a couple more answers coming in. And we are waiting for one last answer. Correct, to oppose and improve government proposals. All right. Ashwadi, was that the one or were you? Mm -hmm. Got it? Good. Um, it is true that the government 
the opposition will put forward bills that are that are to be passed, right? Like bills, other government parties will put forward bills, um, but their whole purpose is to oppose and improve the proposals of the existing government. That's sort of it's the opposition party. Exactly. I know. It was, listen, I feel good that like people have all this knowledge and this is straight from the test. So um, there's a good knowledge base here for people. Whoa. Whoa. Lauren. All right. <laughs> so we've got three more test questions and then our bonus question. I'm going to crack. <laughs> <laughs> what is the meaning of the Remembrance Day poppy. So I have worn a number of these in my lifetime. Many, many, many. And I always, always lose them. And I always, I mean, I always lose a lot of things, but this is one thing that I don't ever get upset that I have to, that I've lost and must repurchase. Okay, we've got a lot of answers. There we go. So it is commemorating Canadian soldiers. Um, Neil, do you know the originate the sort of, origin story of the poppy right so in the first world war the flanders fields is where all mm -hmm. the poppies grew uh after one of the most devastating battles of that war and there are a lot of canadians fighting overseas yeah and so a woman in france um with her name is madame guerin so right now i feel like i'm also just helping you in future trivia but also, it's really interesting story. It is a woman in France who started um, this, and it's an artificial flower that, and they were made by widows and orphans to raise funds for returning soldiers. And she had talked about doing, and she was doing poppy days. And in 1920, she went over to the U.S. to speak um, at an event where she proposed like an inter-allied poppy day. Um, so that's kind of how it came to be across, um, you know, the Commonwealth and uh, or in uh, the U.S. Um, okay. Next question. What are the three main groups of Aboriginal peoples in Canada? Oh, this is a good question. This is, you know, an, an important topic that I can't speak um, for everyone, but when I was younger, um, this was not a topic that was um, often taught in Canadian history. So it's, um, it's not sort of a, a bright spot uh, in our, our history as an, a nation, but it's um, become more topical recently in a lot of Canadians are educating themselves a lot more about um, the history of sort of Aboriginal peoples in Canada and um, working towards um, a number of measures to sort of for reparations with respect to that history. Um, so it, it is an important part of our history. And so it's a it's an important um, piece to know. So as I've after long after my high school days when I just didn't know a ton about it I've, it's a lot of work to sort of learn about but it's it's a good thing to do and it's a rich part of our culture oh there you go so first nations metis and inuit wow that is great so people are on fire and um i hope you feel pretty good about your citizenship um no potential scope you know performance on the knowledge test dojo uh, nice. came from behind there out of nowhere to the swoop in second spot 
that's it. Lauren, how you feeling? Like the nerves just <laughs> increased so much more. <laughs> now it's just like now you have to deal with the pressure because before there was no pressure. Yeah, I wish I wish I was in the background. I, you know, though if Dodo surpasses me, like respect. I just. <laughs> Lauren's having a good day. Yeah. Uh, Perfect. Okay, so question number nine. Which province is the only officially bilingual province? Is it New Brunswick, Quebec, Prince Edward Island, Ontario? Um, uh, Ontario original? Born in our nation's capital? Neil, have you been to all of the provinces on this? I have, yes. Okay. I have not been to Prince Edward Island. It's very small. You can walk across it in a day. Lauren? I sadly have only been to BC, Saskatchewan, and the Northwest Territories. Um, I've spent a lot more time up in the north um, in the territories than I have actually in eastern and central Canada. Got it. All right. So New Brunswick is the only official bilingual province. Um, and the, in 1969 is when they became uh, officially bilingual, when they passed their, officials languages, their official languages act. Um, Quebec is actually not bilingual. It is French province. Um, and Ontario, while it has the nation's capital, is not an officially bilingual province. CJ, I have a question about Quebec. Yeah. Uh, when you're, if you're traveling to Quebec and Montreal, so I don't know how far this is true, and that's why I want to ask you, do people not answer you if you don't know how to speak French? That is a common misconception. Okay, perfect. Um, Montreal is, so I I spent a lot of time in Quebec. My whole family is from Quebec. I'm the first person in my family in like 200 years to not be born in Quebec. Um, so I am the English person in my family. Um, and my family is very, very French. And it is true that in some parts of Quebec, they may not answer you because they don't understand you. Um, they genuinely just don't speak English. And, um, but in Montreal and sort of English is becoming a bit more uh, prevalent, but they uh, work really hard to protect the French language in Quebec and to ensure that all the businesses have. So in Quebec, for example, Starbucks is not Starbucks. It has to have a French name. So it's registered and called Cafe Starbucks. So all the signs, mm -hmm. Cafe Starbucks and People will speak English um, and be able to speak English in Montreal and sort of Quebec City and the big, big cities, but in a bit of the more rural places. They're, if they're not answering you, it's not because they don't want to, it's likely because they don't understand you. And if they're not answering you, they'll probably tell you in French that je ne parle pas anglais, <laughs> that they don't speak English. Okay, good to know. So yeah, there that is not that is a common misconception. Um, there's it's super bilingual and diverse and rich culture in uh, Montreal and Quebec City has like lots of English as well. Nice. I've been meaning right. to visit, so I'm excited. Yeah, it's super beautiful. Also, very cold in Quebec. City. <laughs> very cold. My family is originally four hours north of there, and it is frozen most of the year. Um, and but it is very cold in Quebec City, but it's very beautiful in the like seven days of summer. <laughs> it might be uh, maybe a month. Um, okay. Oh, Dodo. Nice. Oh, nice. Got in there real quick with their answer. Um, fantastic. Okay. Um, Lauren, you still got this. It's fine. Okay, well, this is the last question. There is a bonus question. But which was the last province to join Canada? We made our last question about the last province to join Canada. I, if I get this question right, I have a story, a backstory on why I know this answer. Oh, even if you get it wrong, I maybe want to hear that story. <laughs> 
Oh, it feels nice to be playing trivia with you guys again. I feel like I should know this, but. Uh... It's not obvious. All right, we've got nine answers coming in. All right, there we go. So it was in fact Newfoundland for Yay. love bonus points. Um, what year did they join? Is, is that a separate question? I mean, is that an It is question? just a bonus question to see if Neil really has all of the knowledge that I just project upon him. 1949. Are you what? Sure? Is it actually? It is 1949. That's amazing. Well, it is 1949. It was the 10th province. Um, some, you know, in 1999, so 50 years later, we did have a new territory join Canada um, when Nunavut became part of Canada, which was sort of a, absorbed some of the Northwest territories. So there we go 10 provinces, three territories. Uh, Ashwati, what's your story? But why uh, I knew this because of Murdoch Mysteries. Um, there is a scene in Murdoch Mysteries where somebody comes from the future. Um, so Murdoch Mysteries is set in, set in, set in Victorian, like early 1900s and then mm. like late 1800s. And then somebody comes from the future um, and tells them that Newfoundland is now part of Canada and nobody believes him and they start laughing at him. Um, that's how I know this. That's so funny. It's a very, when, uh, when we did the episode about like your favorite shows, that was one of your shows that you like, right? Guys, I love that show. I really like it. Uh, and I'm sad, like I'm waiting for the latest uh, season and I have issues about how the last season was ended, but I genuinely like that show. Neil, have you watched it? I have not, no. No, me either. Lauren? I haven't. I should though, because I'm a big fan of like murder mysteries and detectives. So. I once went to, on the topic of Murdoch Mysteries, I've not watched it, but I once went to a team at like TV show taping of the TV show Battle of the Blades, where like very Canadian hockey, like very Canadian TV show where a hockey player learns how to figure skate with a figure skater and they do. Ooh. And I was sitting next to the guy who was in Murdoch. Oh, what? I, I Wait, know. was it the lead or I, I like I all the characters? Oh my yeah. God. Because I used to live in uh, Toronto. So there was, that's where they filmed Battle of the Blades. So. Yeah, very random and cool. It's a long nice. Time. Cool. Okay, great. Um, so this is going to be our final rankings, but um, this is great. So this is based on knowledge. We've got a last question based on speed. So Lauren Neal, strong performances. There's a lot of really good answers. Like those are high scores uh, there. And everyone answered most of the questions right. And the differences seem to be mostly on speed. So that's, <laughs> so the next question, you shouldn't need maximum amount of time to answer this, but it felt important to just confirm, which is what is your favorite Canadian <laughs> English language test? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Great I feel question. good about your chances here. Mm -hmm. This is tough. I know. I I'm, can't wait to I answer this question. Of, I ask a lot of diff difficult questions. What was that, Aswati? I said, I can't wait to answer this question. I'm, I'm trying <laughs> to like figure out the answer, but I can't wait. There's so many options. I mean, there's a lot of choices. A break. I don't know. Like, <laughs> I think uh, the answers read... came in quickly. I like how quickly you people are answering. There's uh, no doubt in their minds. Like they're pretty confident about which is their favorite <laughs> language test. <laughs> There we go. Everybody, that's Yay. what I like to see. So this, our podium, our first ever Kahoot quiz. Lauren in third place. Congratulations. Diego. And our spotlight is Dodo. Oh. Whoever uh, you are, congratulations. Uh, well done. And so much for playing this was our first time trying something new and um it was super fun um Wadi, thanks so much for having me uh neil lauren so much for 
playing. It was nice to trivia again. Yeah, felt good. Solid performance. Okay, uh, but no, thank you for also having uh, creating this game and playing with us. CJ and thank you Neil and Lauren as well for participating again I'm really glad that people participated and learned about Canada so thank you for joining us thank you. all right and with that I will uh, we'll turn off our videos and uh, let you get on with the show okay so our next part of the show is our news updates Okay, as of today, we're still testing in British Columbia, Manitoba, Alberta, and in Alberta in Canada. And if any of you are watching uh, from Hong Kong, we're testing there as well. So please check availability for your tests uh, on subweb.ca. Please note that masks are now mandatory. Uh, so bring a surgical mask or a cloth face covering for your test. You will have to wear this the entire time, including your speaking test. Um, and if you're worried about how that works and how, whether or not your audio will be audible, uh, look for episode 14. Um, it, it is one with the latest immigration updates. Our test center operations manager, Michelle, um, talks about uh, the testings that the tests that they've taken to make sure that um, your voice is still audible through the mask. Um, and if you're curious about understanding more about our your scores, um, we have a score comparison chart on our website now. Um, there is a link in the description below for you as well. So please check it out. You can understand what each level means, um, read sample answers, um, and also learn about the parameters that our readers use to calculate your score. It is a handy feature for you all, so please check it out. And lastly, Selpip Accelerate is now 25% off. Um, make sure you um, avail this discount because it will go back to normal price soon. Um, if you're looking for resources for your prep, uh, Selpip Accelerate is a great resource. Um, you can also find the link to that in our uh, description below. It is a link that will also take you to all other prep products. So you can check all those out after the, the, the show. Um, and that's it for our news updates. Next Tuesday, we're back with Brandy, who will be sharing yet another speaking section response analysis with us. This time it will be for level nine and level 12. So if you're curious to know what a level 12 response looks like, please join us on the 9th of June. You can also tap on the bell notification below and get regular reminders whenever we go on air. If you have any questions about uh, response analysis, especially the speaking, speaking question, you can send us your questions um, at communications at paragontesting.ca. You can also ask your questions in the comments below. And as always, you can also reach out to us via social media. We make sure that we update our Facebook and Instagram on time. And we're always there to answer your comments or your DMs. So please make sure you follow us and engage with us over there. Um, and then... That's it, actually. Um, I will see you next week, and I hope you wash your hands. Bye.